tell us about real estate right now. Uh, it has been a good hedge against inflation. Inflation is a problem. At the same time, interest right. rates are going up. At this, and we have some real problems with some office occupancy. Right. So you've got a lot of topics in there. <laughs> uh, first, if you think about what's happened over the last year, we've had the fastest rise in interest rates in, in probably 20 plus years. And the impact on real estate is pretty significant. Now, you break down different parts of real estate because real estate's broad. So on stabilized assets, buildings that people own, whether it's apartment buildings or office buildings, in a, in a way, inflation's good for those assets, right? Rents rise, they go up, and if you did a good job managing your assets, you might have fixed rate long-term debt, so cash flows increase. So in, the, in that bucket of real estate, inflation is, is, a, is a great hedge. Uh, inflation's great for, for real estate assets. Um, if you're in the funds business, and many, many of your viewers are, uh, whether they're credit funds or equity funds, this is a great time for that business. The banks, as you know, have stopped lending or have certainly pulled back um, significantly. And so the private credit markets are, are booming because where they were competing with the banks in the past, they in effect could make bank type loans at two times the rate. So that's a great opportunity for credit funds. Uh, equity funds, we haven't yet seen real distress. We might start seeing that in the, in the next couple of months. So I think the funds management business in real estate is going to be very strong going into 23. The difficult part for real estate is, is anything you want to do new. New development is difficult. There's not a lot of financing. There's not a lot of construction loans. Costs have gone up, um, so it makes uh, it harder to build. Um, so it's, it depends where you are in the real estate markets um, as to what you know, the impact is. Uh, the office sector, as you mentioned, that's, that's a, a whole topic into itself. Um, and I think really people, people ask me all the time, tell me about what the office market. And really the office market is, is very bifurcated and I don't think there's one answer again. Um, what we have seen is, is a real dispersion in values between older buildings and, and brand new buildings. Um, and it's not just new, it's new with the right features, the right amenities that tenants are looking for today. Um, so we're seeing more and more corporations thinking about how do they get people back to their office and thinking about using the physical space as the attraction to bring people back. But truthfully, people don't want to go back to old kind of quiet offices that are dark and have bad air circulation and long waits in the elevators and no amenities. So what corporations are doing is investing in their office space, not for occupancy, but for talent attraction and retention. And I think that's where you're really seeing uh, the A buildings and the new buildings that are focused on this, that have the right amenities, that have the right HVAC circulation, that have hospitality type services, that have great air and light, um, and the right type of build out. Uh, the build out in office space is changing tremendously. Where we used to see kind of the old Mad Max version of a build out with you know, private offices on the exterior wall and um, assistance offices or cubes inside, that's really not the way office is, is, is built today. We're seeing much more collaboration space, teaming space, meeting space, food service, tables around food where people are using for gathering and working as opposed to private offices. So this type of office of the future um, we think can be successful and is successful. The data is there today um, for these new buildings. So we compared brand new buildings across markets in the, in the United States, um, not just here in New York, and you look at new modern buildings with the right features, the right amenities, and the demand for those buildings is tremendous. And at the very same time, you can go a couple blocks, like if you take Hudson Yards, for example, we just opened last, uh, last week, actually our first tenant moved in yesterday um, at 50 Hudson Yards. 50 Hudson Yards is a three million square foot building. It cost us over $4 billion to build this building. And, and it's essentially 90 plus percent lease at this point. We're getting the highest rents in New York City in that building, over $200 a foot in that building. And because it is, it has all those features and amenities. Right. It is new. It has all those things that right. we're talking about. You can go three blocks away and find as much space as you want yeah. in B buildings that's probably listed for $60, and they can't lease it. So I want to come back to the B and C in a moment, but let's stay on the A, because even with everything you say about the A, are people needing a little less A space? I mean, we had the meta situation actually in right. Hudson Yards, where they right. gave back 250,000 square feet. Are you seeing that more broadly, where people are saying, yes, I really like A, but I don't need as much of it? 
So not really. So there's a couple different situations. So Meta, um, actually, uh, what Meta did is when we made the deal with them, they are our anchor, one of the anchor tenants uh, along with BlackRock in, in 50 Hudson Yards. When we made the deal for them to move into 50 Hudson Yards, that was uh, three plus years ago, four years ago, um, and they needed space immediately. So they took some swing space in 30 um, with the intent to move into 50. So that's the space that they are not staying in today. Everyone thinks there was this big announcement, but that was, that's, that was the plan. Uh, so they are moving the employees that they have in, in 30 Hudson Yards, which, was, which were in swing space, into 50. Now to answer your question, there are companies like Meta today that are pulling back on office space in general, but that has nothing to do with their build out of the space. That's, you know, the tech sector is pulling back, they're cutting costs. That's based on their business. That's based on kind of what's happening in the broader economy. If you, if you ask Meta about their office space per employee in their new types of build outs, and so they have actually stepped back, rethought about the office space of the future, and it's all the things that I talked about. Much uh, fewer private offices, much more gathering and meeting spaces. And when you, when you take, the same, when you take the, the same number of employees and compare the old build out and the new build out, the mix of, of public space and private space is completely different, but the total square footage per employee is the same. Now, if, they ha if they're pulling back because of general economic issues, that's not a real estate issue. Yeah. Right. It's not an office space issue. Let's come back to the B and C buildings, uh, as we call them. I've read about so-called zombie office buildings now yeah. in New York City. They're really empty. Uh, how bad a problem is that? What are we going to see? What's the fallout? And by the way, does that also create some opportunities, some bargains to pick things up cheap? Right. So I think it is a, a pretty significant issue for New York City. Uh, you've had some companies leave New York. Um, you've had some companies suffer through the economic downturn and COVID and supply chain and all the things that have happened. Um, and have vacated space in those B buildings. Um, the problem is uh, there's, not a, there's not a lot of tenants that want to release those spaces. So uh, we're seeing uh, vacancy in the B buildings increase significantly. We're seeing the vacancy in the not just A buildings, but in new product A buildings, which is I'll create a new segment. So you have B, A, and new A. Um, in new A is virtually no vacancy. Hmm. Um, so there could be opportunity. I don't think the opportunity is to buy those buildings because you can buy them cheap. I think there's a potential opportunity for conversion. It's a very difficult process. Everyone likes to talk about it, but you, often these buildings don't go from 100% occupied to zero, and then you can convert. So it'll go from 100 to 80 to 70. You still have lots of tenants in there. It's hard to convert. You've got zoning issues, cost issues, mm -hmm. and tenants. So. I don't think you're going to see a lot of it. People are talking about it. I don't think you're going to see a lot of it actually happen.